This is my home Blink charger that I've had since 2011, and unfortunately about six months or a year ago it started to display a self-test error fault, which looks like this. And uh, from re reading on the internet, there's a couple of possible fixes in here. So first I'm going to open up the unit. Down here you can see, there uh, it's a little bit hard with this light, but there are two hex screws here. I'm going to remove these two hex screws and then we'll take a look at what we got. Okay, so I've removed these two hex bolts and it looks like I used a uh, 5 30 seconds. Uh, and then um, you, you also have to cut the, the security tie that's there. And then this whole outside cover comes off. And then it looks like I've got some hex bolts I'm going to need to remove. Okay, so I've got those five 10 millimeter bolts off. But now you can just pull that front face off. I've done two things to make it easier to see the situation. One is I've removed this RFID plate, and these take two T7 screws, nothing else will do. And then I've removed this Ethernet plug, which goes down here so that we can get a better look at this in here. So what we're looking at here is we've got the power coming in from here. There are crimped connectors here that go into this junction block. And then on the other side of the junction block, I'm not sure if they're crimped or it doesn't really look like they're crimped. Then the wires come out here. They go through this current transformer that measures the current. And then it goes through, it kind of looks like the same thing, but this is a, technically not a current transformer. This is just to reduce RF interference. Um, I think it's called a toroidal. Uh, anyways, and then it goes to the rest of the system. And the theory is that this self-test error is because of um, a grounding problem. Um, and so I don't quite understand as an electrical engineer, but not a hardware engineer, why it would be that sliding this current transformer closer to this uh, interference reducing thing is going to make much of a difference. I guess it makes sense that if you're sliding it closer to this, you're going to have less interference. But anyways, that's one possible solution. Slide this closer and zip tie it. Uh, another possible solution is uh, some bad crimping. Um, Apparently, there have been some problems with bad crimps. Here's some crimps here. There's also some crimps in the, the powers cables coming into here. I've checked all my wires. I don't see any sign of a bad crimp. I don't see how soldering anything could make anything better. Um, and then the third option is to actually dumb the whole thing down by basically killing all of the high-tech electronics. The way you do that is you come up here and there is a blue cable goes into the top of the board. I, unfortunately, I cannot see it, but there's a blue cable that goes into the top of this board. You pull that blue cable and that will kill the functions. And then there's also another blue cable that comes in here and this will kill the Linux computer that's draining the batteries. And not much. It's like eight watts. Um, and then it's supposed to just work without the brain. So I'm going to check a little bit more into if any of these things look suspicious. Um, I will zip tie this here, but I, I think I might also kill the computer. So here's a potential issue that I found. I removed the bolt from this terminal block so you can see this better. Uh, these uh, wires on the left are crimped and they look perfectly fine. I took them out, checked them, there's no signs of any problems there. On the right, they're not crimped and these wires that are leading these uh, copper strands that are leading out of the terminal block, I found that a few of them were kind of haphazardly strewn about. And you're only half an inch from the back plate here where it's grounded. And what I suspect might be happening is that those few strands, if they're close enough to the back plate, can actually start bleeding a little bit of current off into the ground, and that would cause a ground fault. So what I've done is I've taken these wires out. At first I thought, oh, well, let me solder these, and that would correspond with what I've heard techs have been doing, but it turns out that soldering these is extremely difficult because there's very little room in that terminal block. The second problem is that solder actually does not conduct electricity as well as copper and the industry standard in high voltage applications, high current applications, is to crimp. So instead what I'm going to do is I've cut this back, I've trimmed all the wires, I've wound them tightly, I'm going to insert into the terminal block and just be very careful I don't see a single strand popping out of there. This is after the job is done. You can see I have trimmed 
I've actually trimmed some of the end because I thought it was too long and then tightly wound them and inserted them and, and even after all the work I did I see one strand on the top just ever so slightly peeking out but that's not going to be a problem the real question is what does it look like on the back side and I see that it's completely clean um, so this goes back down here I'm going to have to resecure that to the wall and then the other thing is so I've moved this current transformer all the way to the right right up next to this interference reducer and hopefully that should help it as well. Although I think really the problem would, the only problem that really makes sense is, is some current bleeding off through these. And then you'll also notice that these guys, these wires are, go, go into this block again here, but um, I see that they're completely clear of, even though they're not 100% perfect, there's no danger of any current bleeding off from there. So I don't think that's a problem. That change still works, which only tells me that I didn't screw anything up. I don't know whether that'll really work in the long term. I am going to try it that way, but I want to show you if that doesn't work for you, what do you do to make this charger work for you? So no matter what, you should do that because that is a safety issue. But after that, then you can remove the um, brains of the operation per se by going in here. I'm trying to do this blind, but there's a, a five pin blue cable here. And I'm going to pull this cable. So there's the cable. Let me try to focus on that. So I pulled that cable from the top. And then also down in the bottom here is a three pin cable. Pull those two, and now it's supposed to work as a dumb charger. So we'll let's let's see what it does when it uh, it's a dumb charger. I've turned the charger on, but I don't. But nothing happened at all. There's no clicks, no beeps, no nothing. So I'm not quite sure how long to wait after I've turned it on. So now I'm going to plug my car in, and let's see. Okay, so it is charging. So the dumb charger seems to work just fine. Time will only tell whether everything works perfectly under this charging. But that's what you can do if you're getting that self-test fault too much. But before I, you do that, I would definitely try fixing, I'm not even going to get close since the power's on, but fixing the, um, take these wires out of the block there, check for any spare wires coming out of there, make sure there's absolutely nothing coming out of the block, that will make sure there's nothing going to the ground, and um, then you should be fine. You shouldn't really need to pull the brains, but it's an option for you. Good luck. This is a follow-up a few hours after I did the modifications here to slide the current transformer over and made sure there wasn't any stray wires here. The problem came back. So what I've had to do is I've had to kill the computer. I've pulled the blue wire here and then up here. Uh, I, I can't see it myself, but there's a, a, a blue wire harness here that I've pulled out of this little slot right there. Pulled that wire out. And, uh, and now I'm going to try using it just as a dumb charger. Um, nothing will come on the screen, no clicks or anything until you actually plug it in. But I believe that should solve the problem.